part eight, reading comprehension, best practices. So team, remember in comprehension, we have these three major areas and I wanna quickly review them just because it's, it's, it's so important to see this. Reading comprehension, we have gonna have vocabulary questions. They're gonna be best practice questions. There's gonna be sort of text questions. And we've done some vocabulary questions and now we're gonna to shift to some best practice questions. And, and then we're going to do some text questions. Understand that this section of the test, all these things are happening, could be happening at the same time. Meaning you could be doing a, a vocabulary strategy. That's going to be a best practice strategy. That's for a specific type of text, informational text. Okay. So just understand that what we're going to do is kind of just focus in on um, scenarios involving best practices. And it might be a vocabulary best practice. It might be a, a narrative or expository text best, best practice. But we're going to just focus in on best practices. And we're going to look at best practices. And we're going to think about um, reading comprehension practices sort of uh, in three major categories. Let me pull them up. So we're going to think about them in terms of, let me grab it. Uh, here we go. Before, during, and after. Things that you do before to help understand the text things that you do during reading, active reading comprehension strategies like metacognitive strategies to understand a text as you read. And then after, things that happen like uh, after you read, like post-reading questions or text-dependent questions or, or activities that you do after to further your learning. So we'll look at these three major areas. Now, you are probably very familiar with this stuff because you've, you've gone to school as a teacher and they've talked about best practices uh, before, during, and after reading. And you've, you've had exposure to this. So I should be able to say, for most teachers listening now, I should say that before you do anything, you always want to activate schema. You've heard that before. Activate schema before you read a passage. That's probably going to be your number one strategy, right? That and probably number two, pre-teach some of that really tricky uh, vocab, that really tricky tier two and tier three vocab. I'm sure you've heard that one too, right? Before doing a class or doing a lesson, you always pre-teach the vocabulary so that students aren't shocked or overwhelmed or, or frustrated when they see those new words in the text. These are two strategies that everyone's seen before, and you're going to see them on your exam when it comes to best practices for what you do before a reading activity. Or how about during reading? Probably have heard of a couple of these metacognitive. When I say metacognitive, I'm talking about those active reading comprehension strategies, the strategies that you do um, while you're reading. Like you've probably heard of the play the movie in your mind visualization one. Yes, I'll just write down TV, <laughs> right? You visualize what's going on. You've heard of visualization or, or maybe you've heard of uh, asking questions. As, as you read, ask yourself questions. I'm sure you've heard of that or, or uh, text to self connections, uh, all sorts of all sorts of ways to interact with your text. That's going to be during and that and those strategies that we call that are interactive with the text. We call those metacognitive strategies. They have you think about the text as you're reading about it. And then the final one is post reading. You probably had post reading questions before. Anything that you do after reading that helps you uh, interact with the text a little bit more to build a little bit deeper meaning, or maybe uh, test your understanding, like uh, have a student read a passage and summarize it. That's a type of post-reading you know, comprehension strategy and a type of assessment too. So team, we're gonna talk about these things that you already have had exposure to. And, and what they're gonna do is now you're gonna see these same scenarios in, uh, in the multiple choice. And, and this is going to help lead us to the, the second essay. Immediately after this section, um, once, we finish, uh, once we finish with best practices, we're going to go into the second essay. So, so we're going to cover some really important ideas because the second essay is on comprehension. And they're going to ask you to do a, uh, a strategy in comprehension. So we want to make sure we have some of these written comprehension strategies down. Okay. So very, very important stuff. Now we're going to start. Uh, in our journey of before, during, and after with best practices, we're going to start with before. Okay, so we're going to take a look at before in terms of reading comprehension. We're going to look at before strategies first. All right. All right. So, all right. So, in this set of problems, we will target before reading comprehension strategies, which you, we've already foreshadowed too. All right. 
like this one right here, pre-teaching vocabulary, so important. This is probably one of the number one things you can do before reading, doing a reading activity, especially of an informational text. It could be informational or narrative text, but if you're doing an informational, it could be both. This is actually a best practice for both an informational text and a, a sorry, I should have said literary text or a story. You always want to pre-teach vocabulary. You want to target that vocabulary, that tier two and tier three vocabulary that you think might be uh, confusing for the student. See if you can clarify it. Looking at this text right here, uh, this, this text is a couple things. One, there's a visual support, and that's going to help activate maybe the student's schema visually, right? They, they're going to see something there. It's going to visually activate something. You're going to introduce some new vocabulary terms and phrases that might be new, what a longhouse is. Uh, maybe clarify, you know, before reading a text like this, clarify this term, clarify Northeast Woodlands, where that is. You know, basic things like this, right? With a visual support, you know, are, is going to help pre-teach some of that key vocabulary, activate schema as you're doing it. And this is going to help students um, understand the text. So whenever you have a chance, pre-teach vocabulary, okay? All right, so with that in mind, you know this is the best practice. We always do this before. You're gonna have questions on activating schema, and here's one of them. Everyone take, tw uh, take I was gonna say 20 seconds. Take a minute, uh, a minute to two minutes, and read this over to yourself, okay? Are you ready, set, go, on your own. Let's talk about it. Let's think about this. Make some observations. First, this is from that older 90 test. That means that this is over 10 years old. I'd say 15 years old, all right? It's an older question. Now, even back 10 years ago or 15 years ago when they actually were writing out this, the, uh, the comp reading comprehension questions on this test were a little bit longer than the earlier stuff on foundations of reading. So, you will find as you go to the second half of the test, some of the questions get longer. This one was long <laughs> for 10 years ago. Now it's like a short one, but 10 years ago or 15 years ago, it was like a really long question. Teachers were like, it's so long. It's not that long. It's got like three sentences, short sentences, and, and the answers are in sentence form. But right now it's sort of like an average question at this point. What do you notice in the question? Well, it starts off with third grade. So maybe right off the bat, you're thinking maybe reading comprehension, right? Let's keep going. The, uh, a third grade class includes struggling readers. Let's circle that, struggling readers. They're not going to use that phrase anymore, struggling readers. They're going to be more specific. Like what exactly is making the students struggle? They're going to say, oh, maybe it's a student and that student's on an IEP. Or maybe that student's on a 504 plan. Maybe that student has a, um, has a, is a student that is learning English as a second language. So they're going to be more specific with what exactly struggling means. But either way, it doesn't matter. If you see struggling or if you saw a student fall into any of these categories, what it's saying, whether it's an IP, ELL, 504, struggling reader, whatever term they use, issues with attention, whatever it is, it means that the student is behind in reading where they're at risk with reading. Guess what? Most of the students that you work with right now are at risk because of the pandemic. They are behind in their reading. So it really doesn't matter who they put in here. Most third graders right now are struggling readers or at risk readers. Okay, so we have basically a class of third graders, right? The that are struggling with reading. Uh, the teacher would like the whole class to read a historical novel. That's a content text. That's That means we're going to do reading comprehension of an informational text, right? Okay, that's another reason we're in the reading comprehension zone. So the text is an informational text. Okay, as part of an interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary unit on Native Americans of the Northeast. So again, all these things are saying it's a reading comprehension uh, 
um, scenario involving an informational text and you're trying to help out a reader that's behind, right? That's, that's what that's saying. Which of the following activities is likely to promote the struggling reader or, or, or the student on the IP or the LL student, whatever they say, this means the same thing in, the scenar in these scenarios because the student is behind. Which of the following activities is likely to promote the student, the struggling reader's comprehension of the novel? Okay, so we're going to try and help a struggling reader or a student that's behind with the novel. What's going to help them? Well, <clears throat> there's three things here. There's three words that are really important. Did you see them? Do you help a student that's behind by doing the strategy before, during, or after? Do you wait till after the reading's done? After the student's been frustrated and had a hard time to help them? Right? No, that's too late. That's out. Too late. How about during reading? Is it, is it, do you save the day when they start to read? Too late. Too late. You missed the vote. When do you help them? Well, you're going to help them before. Does everyone see that? So just those three words. We could cross out B and C just for that. You can go and look at D. D was another answer. It's on this test here. But but just by looking at that, if we see a struggling reader, we help. We, we don't wait till they're drowning, right? We help them beforehand. How are we going to help them beforehand? Well, what's a strategy that works uh, for most students? Pre-teaching vocab. What's another strategy that works for most students? Activating schema. These are best practices. One, two. Yes? These are your friends. You want to help a struggling reader? That means, that means you have to do something in advance before the reading actually happens. And these are the two things that you're going to do in advance, right? The answer is A. Now, A from this test here. And guess what? We're going to do some other questions involving uh, this. But the answer is still going to be the same. Activate schema, pre-teach vocab. But you're going to see now uh, questions that are more wordier a little harder, but the, the root is going to be the same. How are we going to help this struggling reader? We're going to help them by pre-teaching vocab and activating schema. Or how are we going to help this ELL student who's struggling with the text? We're going to help them with pre-teaching vocab and activating schema. Or how are we going to help the student on the IEP or 504? We're going to blah, blah, blah. You, you get the idea, right? You see the pattern? We can use the same, the same awareness of these, these uh, best practices to help that student or a variety of students or basically all students right now because COVID, right? Most students are behind right now. This would work for everybody. Okay, all right. The answer is A and let us continue. Another schema question, let's go. Actually, this is, this is pre-teaching vocab, sorry. This is schema. So let's talk about schema. Schema or uh, activating prior knowledge, right? That's what that means. When we activate schema, we're recalling what we already know to help us understand what we're reading. So if we're reading about a story about uh, a dog, maybe the dog's name is, is Old Yeller. That's, that's supposed to be a dog, okay? The dog's name is, oh, I have a dog. He's, he's not in the room right now. He, he, he left. It does not look like that. That looks like a bear. Yikes. Okay. Anyways, there's a dog, Old Yeller. And if you've ever read the book, Old Yeller, uh, and if you've ever had a pet, right? And your pet, let me do a, let me do a, a pet cat. I've had a pet cat too. Have you ever had a pet cat or, or dog or any animal that's passed away? Yes? Not, not fun. If you're reading Old Yeller and you can remember what it was like when your dog passed away, ah, 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 ah then you don't need to read Old Yeller yet, right? Because that's essentially the story. But, but basically, what are we doing here? I've activated your background knowledge on the loss of an animal, family pet, yes? Which is going to help you understand what the characters are going through in a story. So when we activate our prior knowledge, we're using what we know from our own experiences to help us understand what's going on in a story or in an informational text. So it doesn't have to be like a, a, a literary text, like a story, like Old Yeller. It could be like maybe you, you've learned how to add, subtract, you know, multiply and divide. And you use that background knowledge in math to help you understand another concept. Maybe you're trying to 
multiply, you know, fractions now. So you use your background knowledge of schema on, on, on doing these operations with whole numbers. Now you practice it using that background knowledge for fractions. You get the idea, okay? Now schema, just like pre-teaching vocabulary, is going to be a very common best practice before doing any type of reading, okay? So let's take that understanding of old yeller and, and activating schema, and let's do some questions. You ready? Here we go. Team, take two minutes. Uh, read this over, and then we're going to talk about it on your own. Go. Pause. What a cool question. Or, or repause, restart, turn it on. Uh, a cool question. It's a cool question because uh, I feel like when you read over this test, the 190, it's another one from the 190. Don't worry, we'll get to some of the other exams in a little bit. But the 190, it has some really good questions and it has some questions that are ridiculously long. All the exams have those. But this is an example of one of those that kind of follows that pattern. Remember that pattern? It has a sort of a beginning. It has a middle. And then it has the end, beginning, middle, and end. And then and then it has some answer choices, right? And if we just scan down the answer choices without even reading them, you're gonna see that. Do you see that? Uh, do you see that? I'm just I'm just scanning it. That right there. Uh, maybe that right there. I just circled three ideas without even reading it. And that's probably gonna be enough to answer this. In fact, you could probably erase all this and just with those words that I've circled, answer it. Okay, so let's see uh, if we can answer this with, uh, with just these phrases uh, um, that have been, everything else is deleted away. All right, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna start in the beginning. It's, and I wanna point some things out on these newer exams, okay? We have noticed that like it says third grade, we're like comprehension, right? Uh, or we're, let's go to another problem from a previous section. Fourth grade comprehension. Almost We can almost tell by the grade it's comprehension, right? But on these newer exams, sometimes what they do is they say like second grade. Now, second grade, hmm, it could be a, it could be a foundations thing. It could be a reading comp thing. How do we know it's reading comp? Maybe we can tell because it's coming late in the exam. So as you do your exams, as you go down down through the questions, you're going to get to um, further down in the in the ideas. So question one and two is going to be more about phonological and phonemic awareness. Question 50 is going to be more about comprehension. Maybe that's how you could solve it. But let's say that that's not the case. Let's say you can't look at the number. You just have the grade. Then second grade could either be foundations or reading. So what do you do? You keep reading. Student demonstrates automaticity decoding grade grade level, regular, and irregular words. What does that mean? Well, I like the phrasing. Uh, they're able to decode grade. I, I feel like there's a little too much writing here, so I'm going to just clear it off. Second grade, we don't know if it's, a, if it's a foundations thing or reading comprehension thing. They do have automaticity with decoding regular and irregular words so regular words could be like cat uh, uh let's do uh cat sheep cow and irregular words like the of some okay so i feel that's more of a foundations thing and they're okay with foundations so they're able to do that they have automaticity of this stuff that means they're okay with foundations okay all right let's keep going However, okay, this is where we want to get to. However, the student frequently experiences poor uh, text comprehension. So that's it, right? Right there. There's your friend. This is a second grade comprehension question. They have poor comprehension. Okay, which of the following steps should the teacher first take to promote the student's reading development? Obviously, of comprehension because they have poor comprehension. So the issue is not foundational stuff. So if the issue is not foundational stuff, remember how we eliminated all this stuff? Let's just, just, just eliminate it for now. 
if the issue is not foundations uh, and they're able to decode with automaticity, then we don't need to work on these, right? Because they already got that. Okay, if the student is has automaticity and they're decoding regular and irregular words, we don't have to worry about font. Remember, we we'll cross that out. We don't have to worry about phonological whatever, right? And sound stuff. That's not the issue. They're able to decode it, so we cross that one off. Uh, how about this one right here? We don't. I'm not even going to read this. They're, they have automaticity, so we don't need to use have an awareness of syntactical clues, right? Because they're not dropping the grammar. They're able to decode that. So they have this 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 fluency and this automaticity with decoding regular and irregular words. But however, they're having a hard time with comprehension. So what do we got to do? Uh, we could help to promote their reading by using questions to determine the students. Oh, I get it. We're going to ask them, uh, uh, check to see about their vocab and their background knowledge on the text. Doesn't that seem like a uh, like our two best practices? We're gonna we're gonna assess their vocabulary to identify what tier two and tier three vocab they don't have, right? And and clarify it. And we're going to activate their schema or check their schema on a given topic, see if they have any background knowledge on that or not, right? Uh, let's give an example. Let's go back to this picture real quick. If you were to um, uh, mention to a student, let's say, uh, a longhouse and sheets of bark and sticks. And you know what? Maybe they'll look at you and they'll have no idea what you're talking about, right? They never heard of that phrase before. They never seen a longhouse before. They're thinking something else. And, and they may be thinking about sticks and sheets and thinking something completely different, right? They lack the schema. Um, they may not uh, know the vocabulary. They may look at this. They may decode all the words and, and still just not Iroquois. They may, they may they may look at this and just be very unfamiliar with the majority of what's here. They can decode parts of it, most of it, but not understand it. Okay, so how do we help them understand? Well, we assess their vocab. We act. We assess their schema, and then we do things to pre-teach vocab, activate schema using visual supports. Right. But first, we got to get a sense of, you know, where they are. All right, I kind of chopped this one up a little bit. But you see how we did this? We got to the second grade. We asked ourselves, is it a, uh, is it a foundations thing or is it a reading comp thing? We saw that they were good in decoding, so I'm going to cross that off. But they're having difficulty with comprehension, so we're going to circle that. So this is a reading comprehension question. And it's, a, and it's a reading comprehension question involving an informational text. So how can we help them with reading comprehension of an informational text? What are some best practices? Well, if it's comprehension, then it's not this or this or this or this. If it's comprehension, we're going to check, check their vocab and activate uh, and work with uh, background knowledge, right? Yes? The answer is D. And this one comes from this test here. And if you're out there, you're in California and you're taking the RECA test, or maybe you're in Texas taking the science of teaching reading test, uh, I think that this is a good one to take a look at. These This is a practice exam in Massachusetts and North and it's soon to be in some of the other states like North Carolina and Ohio. And I just feel like, you know, um, it's not a perfect test, but it's got some, it's got some solid. Let me say some solid generic questions that you might see. So good one to take a look at. Team, the answer is D. And we get a review some of this stuff, even though we're not, even though the answers to this question are not involving syllabication or phonological processing like letter sound mapping and, and, and phonological awareness and, and syntax and semantic clues, even though those aren't directly connected to the question, you get review of those ideas. So when you see syllabication, right, you should be like, oh, yeah, like rabbit, using the, the rabbit rule, vowel, constant, constant, vowel, yep, yeah. or uh, phonics, like in sheep, but constant diagraph, vowel diagraph, right? You, you're reviewing that stuff um, for yourself as you go through this, okay? All right, the answer is D. Let's continue. Uh -huh.